Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Todd Pesek. I'm a holistic physician and an ethnobotanist. And I'm Dr. Ron Remenick. I'm a psychological anthropologist. Hi, I'm Murli Dyer. I'm a social worker. And we're answering some frequently asked questions of uh, students and uh, faculty and community members at uh, Cleveland State University, Cleveland, Ohio, USA. Can you elaborate on the mind-body connection? Our Western uh, way of thinking or school of thought is one of, let's try to compartmentalize these different things. And so we talk about the body and the mind as if they're separate things, when in fact they're not. Most of science um, uh, searches for truth by elaborating on these extensions of our senses, right? The classic senses in the textbooks, they talk about, you know, sight, smell, hearing, touch, taste, all these five senses, when in actuality there are more. And all the traditions of the world, in particular Eastern traditions, they talk about additional senses, like the sixth sense. Um, they, they, uh, they actually call it the way of knowing, or knowing. And um, this is gut intuition. And as energy bodies, we're learning more and more about that. The uh, again, ancient traditions have been talking about this for five, six thousand years, probably earlier. But now we can measure energy flows, and we uh, know that uh, even at the, because of quantum mechanics and our, our sophisticated technology, we could even uh, count the uh, vibrations of DNA. DNA and all our cells and our bodies uh, emit uh, biophotonic emissions. So we're also, not only are we walking bodies, but we're uh, walking and flowing and radiating bodies of energy. And this energy now we find we can manipulate. And we also know that our emotional states feed back on the energy states that we have. And in fact, now with the science of epigenetics, we're seeing that um, <clears throat> our emotional states and the energy flows of our body actually can affect the expression of uh, genes and, and their effect on our body. Whenever we are under high stress, uh, negative stress, uh, we all have a craving for all kinds of food. You know, and it's again controlled by our mind. And somewhere or other, the dichotomy, we do not project, especially the media. You know, they always say that eat this and drink this and our body has a tendency of craving for all these things. If our mindset is such that there is a lot of negativism or negative thought or negative stress attached to it, you know, um, our uh, mind can do amazing things you know, to a human body. And so there is always a connectivity, like they are all saying, between body and mind. And our physical body cannot be compartmentalized without looking at our mindset. You know. So that's something we may need to keep in mind and we need to do more research on it. A lay person may not recognize you know, what the mind can do to us in terms of projecting our body image. You know. Yeah, and uh, where doctors look at symptoms and treat symptoms, uh, you might say the traditional uh, healer or a shaman looks at the whole person as well as the community that that person lives in, the environment that that person lives in, because it's all connected. Yeah. It's not just uh, one body, yeah. uh, in a physical being in, in an environment. <clears throat> it's all connected to yeah, each other. Yeah. I'm sure my uh, colleague uh, uh, Todd, who is a physician by himself, uh, agree with me that the psychosomatic symptoms attached to an illness. When a, f a patient come to you and say, I have this, this, and uh, the raw study shows that almost half of our uh, physical uh, ailment is some connected to psychosomatic illness, right? Uh, yeah, I, absolutely, I concur. Um, one of the really interesting things um, that uh, we see emerging in, um, in, in evidence-based literature with regard to the uh, mind-promoted um, health is this um, uh, is is basically a reversal or a possibility for a reversal of stress-based illness? Yeah. And um, it's really interesting to know that uh, here in the U.S., as as much of the Western world, 
life expectancy is going down. And it's going down because of this stress-based illness. Um, for example, one of the things that we've done here at the Center for Healing Across Cultures, this is a university setting and we have students who, uh, they're always uh, stressed out about this exam or the next exam or whatnot. And um, it really contributes negatively to their health, anxiety and uh, the whole gamut of, um, of mental health issues because of that anxiety. So we did, a, last fall, we piloted a, a study on mindfulness where we had two groups of students. One, one group um, was a control group and really didn't do uh, anything differently. And the other group was a group that participated in just the simple process of being mindful for a few moments each day. We uh, brought in a, a, a workshop uh, coordinator and um, she was a, a, a beautiful energy healer and taught the students how to be mindful and do a mindfulness meditation session in the morning. Um, that study showed basically by, by inventory with the Hamilton Anxiety Survey, which is an instrument designed at assessing anxiety and stress-based illness, um, showed a 50% reduction in anxiety among the students that were mindful from just a few moments each day. And, um, you know, it, 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 goes, it, it goes back to what traditions do and, and, and talk about. Elders the world over um, will tell you that, uh, look, you know, people in the modern world, they spend most of their time out of the present. They're either worrying about things in the past or they're worrying about things in the future, and, and they lose sight of the right now. And this is the whole process of being mindful. Walk outside and look up and appreciate the blue sky. Appreciate the day. Appreciate the moment. Your friends, your family, the things that are beautiful to you. Bask in these energetic fields as we are all connected. All of the people, the tree people, the people people, the rock people. We're all an interconnected ecosystem kind of like a soup, and as Dr. Remnick eloquently states, these, our connection, our sensations of connections, our thoughts uh, actually manifest physically, uh, both for us and those around us, and, um, and in material things. Yeah, uh, we all should have a quest, that's a big capital S for should, a quest after beauty. We need to look for the beauty in, in the world as well as in our lives and, and uh, get away from toxic environment, toxic stimuli, to uh, understand what is toxic and what is beautiful because the beautiful is the healing. And when you, once you uh, are appreciative of the beauty, your immune system is elevated and you'll, you won't get sick as fast as other people. It is unfortunate in our society, we were told not to believe um, in yourself, you know. The, the, if you look at a lot of this Far Eastern culture, the concept of self-realization, you know, is something, you know, either you are a, a young person or an elder or a person who is not educated and they, we all have our own uh, energy within us, you know, and unfortunately in our modern world, the media, they project in a matter of split second a sublibial message, you know, saying that this is good for you, this is not good for you, they are excellent in marketing. Yeah, and yeah. They, they get you, uh, buy into all kinds of things, which yeah. you are, is really not good for you. So, yeah. my humble suggestion is, uh, take your own time, close your eyes for a few seconds, and then realize yourself all the potential you yourself got you know don't try to suck into this uh, sublibial messages you know you turn your television on what you hear in a matter of few minutes they change your mind but and you have to cultivate a consciousness yes, for consciousness. the, the uh, media manipulation yes, yes, which yes, is yes, very yes, insidious yes, yes. and it's and it's and it's quite challenging right, right? because the, the the we're told every second of every day in any which way, shape, and form who to love, what beautiful is, what kind of illnesses you should fear. And it's what you should eat. Fear and all based, it's fear-based propagation of illness, and it causes illness. Our major causes of morbidity and mortality uh, need not exist. These, these diseases of civilization, 
coronary artery disease, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, all of these things are linked to stress responses, stress-based illness. Um, uh, our ancestors had protective mechanisms, right? You're walking through the forest and you see a bear. So your eyes get wide, your blood vessels dilate, you get the adrenaline surge, you are about to fight the bear or run from it, right? And, uh, and you do, you run to safety and you're back at your, your place and you, you, you eat a meal and then you sit down and relax and then you fall asleep. This is um, uh, illustrative of the, the dualism in our, in our body's stress response from fight and flight of, you know, to rest and digest mode. And you don't have to see the bear to, uh, to engage the stress response. If you're just worried about getting somewhere and rushing around and rushing from here to there, your body is constantly going up and down like this. And that stress-based response is not in balance. Um, one must uh, strive to not let the ups get you too up and the downs get you too down so that you could meter your, um, uh, your healthful physiology in a balanced fashion and, and do dial in to what is beautiful and wonderful around you so that as um, uh, the doctors are suggesting, um, you can appreciate the, um, uh, the moment. Yeah. So what are some ways that we can strengthen our mind-body connection? Well, certainly uh, meditation is, is one of the key ways uh, to be aware to be aware of what's going on inside your head, your, in your consciousness and subconsciousness, to be aware of what you're putting into your body. Most people are unconscious about what they're putting into their body, but now there's enough information out there to uh, educate us about the dangers of high fructose corn syrup and all the chemicals. You know, if you look at a label, most people don't look at labels, but you look at the label and you see things in there that you can't even pronounce, you should put it back on the shelf because uh, chances are that it's not going to add to your helpfulness. So meditation is one thing. Education is another thing. Uh, to, be, um, to cultivate aspects of your unconscious mind and uh, you do that through uh, certain rituals, uh, walking in the woods, uh, questing after beauty, uh, and developing healthy relationships and knowing uh, who the toxic relationships are that you're relating to. Yeah, yeah. The, um, these, are, these are all important points. And one of the, one of the, uh, uh, the important things uh, that we want our viewers to draw from this is that it doesn't have to be complicated, right? It doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, meditation, um, yoga, all of these things have been practiced for millennia by cultures and traditions around the world. Tai Chi, um, you know, Qigong, uh, all of these are designed to develop internal energy and inner peace and all of these, uh, to the connection to the, the, um, the cosmos. Uh, but it could be as simple as taking a walk in the woods connecting to nature, connecting to those that are around you, um, being mindful, appreciating the blue sky, the song of the bird, the smell of the flower, the beauty of the children. Um, and it, it doesn't have to be, you know, an elaborate three hours a day. It could be a few moments a day, as we told our students with our study, five or ten minutes. And it helped dramatically. I yeah. think it, it's all right. Don't feel selfish. Take a few minutes of your own time and be yourself. Like you were saying, that concept of self-realizing and analyze yourself and be quiet and be calm and like they are saying, uh, go for a walk. And I think the way you need to re-energize yourself, you know, uh, we keep going like a machine the whole day and yeah. it's all right to be yourself uh, and appreciate, you know, not only uh, the outside, you know, appreciate yourself. Appreciate your own body. First time in the history of humanity we've created this artificial environment that removes people from the natural world. When yeah. in fact, we are not removed from the natural world. We aren't above nature. We are inextricably intertwined with everything around us. We are nature. These things have driven our mental health, our, our connections to the cosmic worlds uh, in, in a way for millennia. Yeah. For millennia.